Do you know that the Terran race looked completely different 13 years ago? Today we'll cover the craziest ideas, from literally flying bases to giant robots. Last time we talked about the deleted units and here you can see all the units that Terran race lost throughout the development process. But there is a lot more to it, since many race concepts were redesigned a couple of years prior to the release of Wings of Liberty. And let's start with probably the most interesting idea. Terran units used to have a veterancy mechanic that would make them stronger with the kill count. It's similar to how such mechanics work in other RTS games such as Combat and Conquer. This is also the reason why each unit has a displayed kill count and ranks like Recruit or Captain. This thing was scrapped early on in the alpha versions, probably because it would seem too radical for most players and it could shift the balance between races in turn favor. Imagine the army of mech veterans with extra damage or HP. It would be too tough to deal with. You would also need an explanation why such a system is exclusive to the turn race and why at least Protoss can't have it. Besides that, the turn race had some structures that were later changed or removed completely. For example, there were munition depots. This was a requirement to build fours, and there is little information on these buildings overall. Some things like Merc Depot was transferred to Campaign, and the Raider Station was transformed into Sensor Tower. And some things like Drop Pods from Campaigns were scrapped for various reasons. But there was one crazy idea, and we'll talk about that at the end of this video. But let's get back to concept units. There was also one unit that looked a lot like Viking and filled its role, but it was a bit cheaper and weaker too. The Predator was a Terran Air unit in Fish and Starcraft 2, and present in the game in August 2007, it was removed already by November. It fired 4 lasers per attack, making it powerful against groups of small ships, but really inefficient against heavily armored ships like the Battlecruiser or Carrier. It was also to become the basic air combat unit for the Terran faction, but unlike Viking, it could only engage enemy air targets and was incapable of attacking enemy ground troops. And this unit was, to be honest, rather uninspiring and too basic, so it was later completely replaced by a Viking. Another unit that was redesigned from scratch, that TF-620 Nomad. It was one of the first versions of Raven with a little bit different abilities. It could send repair drones for mech units and cast a shield that would negate 50% of incoming damage. For the mighty Terran mech unit has undergone a lot of changes since its first introduction as early as in 2006. Previously it was presented as an incredibly strong and expensive unit, the ultimate boss that would crush Protoss and Zerg armies. It was more like Odin from the campaign. First versions had a whooping 900 of HP, but they had some vulnerabilities too. Thor was slow and it took quite some time for it to turn around, making it possible to kite with fast units and strike from behind. You also needed to literally build it on the ground. It was produced by SCVs as a structure and was replaced with a factory production only in 2008. And Thor also had two unique abilities. The first is Immortal Protocol. After losing most of its HP, Thor would become immovable but still able to shoot. You could spend 100 minerals and 50 gas to initiate an auto-repair sequence, making him fully operable once again. While it sounds cool, Blizzard thought that the ability was too impractical for multiplayer and hence it was discarded. Those versions of 4 also didn't have any kind of anti-air attack. There were big cannons with splash damage and you needed to cast this ability. It was also deleted because it conflicted with the siege tank and made the latter obsolete. This ability became targeted. But it didn't feel good either because there are no really durable units in StarCraft 2 that would need such an overkill damage. Gradually, Thor was redesigned to what we know now. It was scaled down in size as it was vulnerable to smaller units that could outmicro it. And it also gained anti-air attack to fight with many flying units that could previously easily disrupt the Terran mech army. While it lost its sheer power as a mighty boss unit, it became a lot more versatile and useful overall. Battle Cruiser was also a unit that underwent many changes, and it's really sad that we never saw it in its best form. It had multiple weak attacks that could target different units, but the coolest thing was about its abilities. You could upgrade each Battle Cruiser individually. There were, however, only three upgrades to make, and you should choose wisely. Yamato Cannon made it to the final version, while two others were scrapped because players rarely choose them. The first was defensive matrix that pretty much gave your battle cruisers extra 200 HP, and the second was a missile barrage that would do splash damage to air units. In addition to these choices, battle cruiser also had a ground-only splash ability, so-called plasma torpedoes. They would do gradual damage to light units, and this thing was removed due to the conflicts with siege tanks' role. Now let's see the craziest building, a flying star base. This was a unit structure that could produce any flying units on the move, and it also had an ability that would give energy to all nearby units. 
This concept would allow Terran players to freely move around the map and keep on building stuff for quick reinforcements. But sadly, this mega ship was scrapped for one reason. The Terran race didn't really need that in multiplayer, and there was no incentive to have a flying starport. Maybe just to flex in front of your opponent, but it was really useless. And while it was still possible to give it extra ability and to make it somewhat more powerful, Blizzard just didn't want to make a second mothership and the unit was discarded completely. And now is the time for the truly superior unit. Hell is morphin time. We are more than meets the eye. Terratron was an April Fool's joke from Blizzard Entertainment. It's also the final boss of the Lost Viking, and obviously it was never planned as anything more than that. So as you see, Terran Race was a lot more fun to play, but also a lot less balanced. Take a look at other deleted units, and as usual, have a nice day and see you next time.